Using geometry nodes, we're going to take any shape and put it in any other shape, which will then conform to its boundaries. So it'll allow us to do some really cool effects like pressing an object up against glass or even like filling up another object. So it's all about understanding the boundaries and where the intersection point is. And it'll all be done in geometry nodes. It also lets us do some cool effects like if we have a, a glass or a container and we can basically just have all those objects inside smudging against the, the edges. So to begin, I'm gonna create a new scene. I'm gonna delete everything, create a new sphere, go into geometry nodes, click new, and I'm gonna pin this so we can click off and still see the node graph. All right, to begin, I actually don't need the initial sphere that I made, so I'm gonna just delete the geometry input, and let's just create a new sphere. We could do UV sphere or icosphere. Uh, let's start with an icosphere and we can see how we like it. I am then going to create the boundary that our mesh will conform to. We could obviously create a cube in geometry nodes, but for more versatility, so whatever use case you're using this for, it could work. We're going to just create a cube, and obviously we could change this geometry later however we want, but for now I'll just keep it as a basic cube. And I'm going to go into its viewport display, and I'm going to do display as a wire just so it's not taking up the screen and I'm going to drag this in here. And I'm also going to click this to relative. So whenever I drag an object from the hierarchy, I always click relative. So we can move this around and everything will still work. Okay. So we now have a icosphere and I'm going to just up the sub D's on this, maybe something like four. And we could even make this a little smaller. So we have this sphere and then we have this outer bound. So the question is, how do we get it to smudge or con constrain itself to that boundary? So for this, we actually want to use a raycast node. We're going to basically look at every vertice on this sphere and check if it's outside this, this cube. And if it is outside, we want it to basically smush or flatten to whatever that mesh or that boundary is. So the main trick here is to use the raycast node. And our target geometry is this boundary. And for clarity, I'm just going to rename that to boundary. And I'll leave this as sphere, which our geometry node stack is on. And basically, we want to take every vertice position, like I said. So I'm going to just do a position. And when the object is here, let's say, just like a little bit outside, we basically want to raycast from the opposite direction of the normal to the outer side of the boundary. And the reason I am raycasting backwards is basically I'll show you with, I don't know, I'll do another cube here just so you can see. When I turn on face orientation, it's blue. If I, let's say, delete this one face, you'll see the inside of it is red and the outside is blue. So this means the normals are pointing outward and here it's the opposite. So raycast only can hit things when the normal is blue, okay? So we have this cube set to wireframe and if I were to change that to solid, you can see it's blue. So that's why we need to shoot backwards from these points to see if it hits anything. I'm going to switch this back to wire, turn off face orientation. Okay, so to do this, we actually uh, don't want to do position. We want to do normal. Sorry about that, I forgot. Um, and we want to do a vector math. And we'll do a multiply. Where is multiply? And we basically just subtract minus 1. So this switches the direction. And we'll plug this into ray direction. So it's pretty simple. Uh, now we want to basically set the positions of this object. So I'm going to do set, set position. And right now it's going to just do its ordinary position. But we want to have a certain amount of it, the parts that are hitting, to get flattened. So one, we want to know how, which parts of it are actually hitting and have that in the selection node here. And then we want to set that position. So the hit position will actually work there. 
But now it's actually applying it to everything, the whole sphere. So you get this kind of crazy shape. Um, so I'm going to actually do a vector math. And to evaluate which, cell, which part is outside, I'm going to do a dot product. And I basically do a dot product from the hit normal and this, this normal. And if I do something like a compare node, and I do less than, and I plug this in here. So this should work. Let's say I put it in the selection here, and then I'll say hit position. So now you have this area flattening out when it's outside this, the cube. So there's a few things we can do to clean this up a little bit. Uh, you'll see that their edges are a little bit jaggedy. So you could always up the subdivision, and it'll get better. De depending on what performance you have, you could obviously lower it and, and do a subdivision a different way. But I also like to add a little bit of uh, smoothing here. So, and I can set this to like somewhere between 1 and 2, um, depending on how, what look you want and how hard that e edge is that you want. I also want to set a, se a set shade smooth. And one other thing to note is this origin, this little dot within our, our sphere here, if it goes outside the bounds, currently we're not taking care of it. Uh, obviously, you could add more nodes, but I don't want to make this tutorial too complicated. So instead, I'm going to just add a limit, lo limit location here. And I'm going to limit location of everything. And I think our cube is my from minus 1 to 1. So now I can like freely move this sphere around, and we won't have or we won't encounter any issues. So that's the basic use case for this or way to do it. I'm going to show you one more thing in case you want to instance a bunch of objects. And um, so in order to instance a bunch of objects, I could do something like a instance on points. And we're going to instance this. But. Uh, Let's put it here just so we have more visibility of everything. And I need to generate some points. So I'm going to do a mesh to volume. And we could even take our original cube boundary because we want to instance inside this cube. And then I'll do a, a points to volume, or sorry, volume to points. Uh, where is it? Mesh to volume. Distribute points in volume. Sorry, that's what it's called. And we could do random and select this as our points. So I could obviously up the density There's and change the radius here. So one issue here is when I'm using this, um, this outer bound as the, the volume in which it's instancing, you'll see we sometimes get these instances that are on the edge of this cube. And, and like I showed you before, we want the origin of each sphere to actually be inside the boundary. So in order to do that, I'm going to actually do a scale elements. Yeah, I think this is the right one. And we can just scale this down a little bit. And you see it's starting to contract inward. You could always plug this in if you want to see what's happening. So you can kind of see what this scale did. And we can obviously see where these points are distributing, see where this volume is, try and understand how we want to get it so that we can get the result we want. So something like that will create the points inside, inside the, um, the cube or the outer boundary. OK, so this is all nice like so, but um, I'm actually going to make it slightly bigger because I want to show that, that smush effect that we did. So this should be working, right? But it, it's currently not flattening on these edges. So the reason for that is because we instance these instead of just using the icosphere. We're going to have to realize the geometry or realize the instances, and then it'll start to work. There's one more thing I want to show you, and that's the ability to actually change this mesh. So I could actually just go in here and create a curve, and you'll see we still have this mesh, and these objects are constrained and smushed against a curved surface. 
To me, I think this is really cool and lets it be super versatile. If you want the project file, sign up to my Patreon. And if you like this, please drop a like and a sub or even a comment. Be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.